Hi, congratulations on getting this far. We have come a long way and understood a lot of concepts and now we are ready to use this knowledge to monitor a process. Let's begin. With CP and CPK, once we have identified that a process is capable of producing parts within the target specification, now we can proceed to actually monitor the process performance. As a process can be described in terms of location and spread, our objective becomes to identify if there is any change in the location or the spread over time. And since there always will be a part-to-part -part variation, it is also essential to differentiate between the variation due to common cause and variation due to special cause. Because when we judge that a variation is due to a special cause, when in fact it is due to a common cause, we falsely believe that something is wrong with the process and try to over adjust unnecessarily. And on the other hand, when we judge a special cause to be just a common cause, we tend to neglect and not take any action when it is actually required. The control chart is an excellent tool to solve these problems. Let's see how it works. Suppose there is a process running exactly at target value, an accurate process. Now due to common cause variation, 99.7 of the total produced parts will lie within plus minus 3 sigma. And there is a little chance that a part produced will be outside these limits. And if any part goes beyond these limits, there is a reason to believe that a special cause has occurred, a shift in location or spread. Pretty simple. But there is one problem. I need to plot the data of 100% of the parts, which is usually neither practical nor economical. So we have to adopt a sampling method. Let me explain. Consider there are X number of people in a city. We call it the population, the entire group. According to the rule of sampling, if I divide this population into few subgroups and take random samples from each subgroup of this population, these samples should exhibit similar properties to that of the whole population. So, in our process, let's break this timeline into subgroups and take samples from each subgroup. Now these samples should exhibit similar properties to that of the entire population. However, this rarely happens for our data because these samples are only an estimate of the population. And the mean of these samples, x bar, may differ from the mean of the population, this center line. Hmm. But according to statistics, distribution of this x bars is equal to the distribution of the population divided by the square root of sample size. That means if my sample size is 4, then the mean of these samples x bars will lie within half of the distribution of the population. If x bar goes outside these control limits, it shows that a special cause has occurred and process location the mean has changed. More the size of sample, closer will be the control limits to the process mean. For example, for a sample size of 25, the control limits will be within one-fifth of the process distribution. So now, in place of getting data of the entire population, with control charts, I can take few samples from each subgroup in real time calculate the mean of those samples and if at any point x bar goes beyond these new control limits, it indicates that there is a location shift in the process itself. How convenient! But there is a problem. We are only monitoring the location shift. Consider these two samples. Though the x bar is same, these two samples has fairly different range. So in addition to monitor the x bar, we should also be monitoring the range. So in the timeline, we add another section to monitor the range. That is, the difference between max value and the minimum value of the samples. And similarly, if any point goes beyond the control limits of range, 
it indicates an increase in the spread of the process. Together, these two run charts are known as control chart, where X bar is a measure of central tendency, that is location or accuracy, and range becomes a measure of variation, that is spread or precision. A point to remember in the sampling plan. To get fairly accurate results, we want the variation within a sample to be minimum and at the same time we want the variation between the subgroups to be maximum so that a shift can be easily identified. One way to do this is to take consecutive samples from a subgroup and increase the size of the subgroups. But at the same time, bigger subgroups means if any special cause is detected, the whole subgroup is suspected. So, a sample size of 5 at every 2 hours is a generally accepted sampling plan for most of the processes. Also, it is recommended to maintain an event log at each sampling cycle that includes any potential sources of variation such as shift change, new setup, material lot change, so that if any special cause is detected, we can easily relate and identify the source of variation. That's all about the basics of the control charts. We will learn how to calculate the control limits in the next lesson. See you there.